Uh, this system was designed to allow one to remove their tool probe and get it off the table uh, during machining. It also gives them full access to the table. In other words, if you had a big plate you wanted to put on, all that would be left on the table would be these three T-nuts, which need to remain inside the table during machining. But you can always put the tool probe back on, and it will repeat uh, better than the machine actually can. I have two versions right now. One is the tool probe is mounted to a plate, a kinematic plate, and the other one, the tool probe um, is mounted to the same kinematic plate, but it has a riser block to get the tool probe up above the vise. And there's really, uh, really two main components. We have the three kinematic T-nuts you see on the bottom, and then there's a plate that the, um, in this case, a riser block is bolted to, and that's effectively the entire system. Once it's installed, you'll be able to set it up and align your probe just like you normally would. And once it's aligned, you'll be able to take it off, put it back on, and here what I'm doing is I'm running um, a test indicator across the button and by taking the tool probe off and then to putting it back on, as you can see, it's repeating uh, better than a test indicator can read. Now this is a one-tenth uh, Mitsutoyo test indicator, but it's going to be uh, more accurate or more repeatable than that test indicator can actually um, decipher. Kinematic mounts have been around a long time, and they are designed to allow one to remove a component and replace it back in its mount with extreme precision, oftentimes much better than a machine tool is capable of. Now, when you receive the kit, you're going to receive the kinematic mount plate, a riser block, and then three kinematic T-nuts, and then two fasteners. The short one is to be used without the riser block, and the long one is to be used with the riser block. An assembly of this thing is extremely simple. Effectively, you take the base plate off of the OTS and you just screw it down to the kinematic base plate, either using the long screw if you're using the riser, or the short screw if you're not going to use the riser. The kinematic base plate has a counterbore in it that the riser nests into to locate it accurately on the center of the plate. It's not super critical, but it just helps an assembly. The other thing about this riser, you'll notice it also has a counterbore in it so that the base plate of the OTS will locate in it. So if you actually wanted to remove the riser, the OTS will locate itself very accurately in the base plate. This is probably a good time to discuss this base plate because this is one of the major components of the system. What it is, it's a piece of 17.4 that we've machined some features in. You see the counterbore on this side for the OTS. And there's three holes that are close to that counterbore. Those are used so that you can push the magnets out on the back side to clean them. The magnets are designed to hold this system down onto the kinematic Vs. Now, these balls that you see that are in the back side of this plate, these have been pressed into counterbores, and those are there to locate into the actual kinematic Vs. The Vs themselves are full hard, A2, and they have been precision ground after heat treating to ensure that we get a very good surface finish. Surface finish is critical to preserving the repeatability necessary for this component. So we have surface ground these to ensure that the finish is as good as we can reasonably get without doing a lapping operation. Now the Vs themselves we've identified as left, right, and top. And they need to be installed in this orientation when you're facing the machine from the front. The right V goes on the right, left on the left, top on the top. And your machine tool will determine the spacing of these. And then we have the kinematic plate that will fit these. So depending on your spacing of your T-slots, uh, most are either 80, 100, or 125 millimeters then we give you the proper base plate to connect into these kinematic Vs. Okay, let's finish the assembly of the OTS onto the kinematic base plate, and then we'll go through the installation of the kinematic Vs within the machine tool. To install the OTS uh, back onto its base plate, it's pretty simple. I think there's a total of six grub screws 
And you really want to try and get the OTS in alignment with the X or Y axis, I suppose. It's not critical, but what it does do is um, it helps it uh, sort of be centered on the base plate. And that um, when you go to take it off and put it back on, the orientation, if it's, you know, pretty well aligned to the X axis, you're not going to have to hunt around when you do your final calibration of the system. So I won't bore you with any more than this. We're just tightening the grub screws. And now let's go ahead and install this thing onto the machine. So on this machine, I'm going to be installing this demountable system in the upper left-hand corner. And the way I have the nut set up is the nut furthest from the bottom of the screen is the top. The one on the leftmost side is the left. And the one on the right-hand side is the right. And in the middle, you see we have just a regular T-nut. And what I like to do is when I install this system on a machine, I put a T-nut in between the left and the right kinematic nuts because the kinematic nuts are locked in place and they cannot be moved once installed. So in, in order not to lose that space in between them uh, as a potential T-nut bolting area, I put a T-nut in there that's floating around so you can actually use that. When you have the probe removed, you can actually use that um, that T-nut. Prior to installing the kinematic nuts, it's important that you do clean out these T-slots, especially the surface area on the top of the T-slot rather than the bottom, because that's where the T-nuts or the kinematic nuts bank up against when you tighten down the screw. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to lock down the left T-nut first, and I'm going to line it to be um, in line with the edge of the table. It's not critical that it's there. It's just something that I do so that when I take this thing apart and put it back together, I actually actually be able to find the dimple that's put in the bottom of the table by the set screw and um, re relocate itself pretty accurately. Now I'm going to put the top one in, and then at this point, all you have to really do is kind of eyeball the spacing of the top and the left hand, I'm sorry, the right hand T-nut. And then what I do is just take the slop out with the uh, set screw so that they can, you can still slide them, uh, and, but, they're, but they're not too tight that you can't uh, easily adjust them. And then what you do is you're going to want to take the kinematic base plate and you're going to set it on to the T-nuts, uh, I'm sorry, the kinematic nuts. And what you want to do is slide the top T-nut or kinematic nut um, along the x-axis such that the plate or the base plate, the bottom edge of the base plate where my finger is, is parallel to the T-slot. Now, it is not critical that this be parallel at all. It's just sort of a cosmetic thing and it just makes it look nicer, I guess. But as far as performance-wise, it's not super critical that it's perfect. That's the beauty of this uh, kinematic system is it's not finicky. There's no such thing as an over constraint condition. So they don't have to be perfectly placed exactly 120 degrees at the exact spacing. It's not critical. And then what you do is just tighten down the screw for each T-nut. And this system is now installed. Uh, the, the idea here is that we, we want to be able to hold the system down into those uh, kinematic nuts very repeatably with some force. Now when you go ahead and place this thing on here, it's important that you don't just let it slam down into the into the seats, into the V-nuts, because what will happen is you will end up brunelling or dimpling the V-nuts and then they will lose their repeatability. So they're full hard. They can take it, but just you know, be careful when you set it down on top of it that you don't damage it. And that's basically it. Now you want to align your probe the way you normally would, and you're good. When we mark our kinematic nuts, we do them in the full hard state of 58 Rockwell C, and we're using our own product here. This is our diamond engraver, and it can be used to mark all types of metals and plastics as well as glass. It leaves a beautiful, nice fine line engraved uh, there's no little burrs left over, and it just looks gorgeous. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.